So, my wife bought this home today. She found it on a field when she was driving around. It looks like a field mushroom, perhaps even a horse mushroom. But I wonder. Let's take a closer look. So let's take a look at the features of this thing. The cap is kind of hemispherical, so it's strongly rounded. It's kind of a bit brown on the top, but it's otherwise white. You can see there's some kind of yellow bruising around the edges here. So this is kind of indicative of the horse mushroom. The field mushroom would probably not have such yellow bruising, but it can do. On the bottom there's a large partial veil. It's kind of cogwheel-like, but not. The horse mushroom would have a cogwheel type um, partial veil on it, but this is a bit destroyed, so we can't really tell. The gills are pinkish, like a field mushroom, so they're not kind of greyish like a horse mushroom would be, but Perhaps if you just kind of naively saw this, you might think it looks like a horse mushroom. It has that kind of rounded and slightly flattened off top like a horse mushroom does. So anyway, you take this home and then you're thinking, well, what do I do with this? Well, some people would just cook this thing up and that would be a bad choice because let's have a look in the base of this mushroom. Oh, oh dear, look at that. If that is not a yellow chromatic staining, then I'm a monkey's uncle. That is a yellow stainer, ladies and gentlemen. So that strong, bright yellow staining in the base means that this is definitely a yellow stainer. You would not want to eat this because in most people this induces vomiting within an hour of eating. And I heard one account of this from somebody I met who'd actually eaten this and he said after half an hour after consuming these things, he was projectile vomiting. So you don't want to eat a yellow stainer and you don't want to confuse it with a field mushroom or a horse mushroom. But as you can see, it's a pretty surefire way to tell by looking at the base of this thing and seeing how yellow it is. So here's another one of the mushrooms, and you can see that the yellow staining has kind of faded since we, since we did this one. And the yellow staining is predominantly at the base, but there again you can see the strong yellow reaction. So the yellow staining mushroom, Agaricus xanthoderma, one of the other features of it, when you smell <laughs> the cut mushroom, it really smells like have you ever smelt an elastoplast or a, a plaster? You know, the classic ones you'd get as a kid, those kind of beige colored things. Sometimes they're blue if you're a chef or something. It smells like that. And if you cook this, and I did this once just to see, it stinks like elastoplasts like you wouldn't believe, really strongly. So it's quite surprising that people would actually <laughs> cook this and think it was um, something tasty. But I guess if you mixed it with other mushrooms or if there was just one in there, you could easily make that mistake. So this is actually, I think it's the commonest form of non-fatal mushroom poisoning. And it's, yeah, you don't want to eat it basically. So let's take a look inside this thing. So as you can see, if you did not have the base, then there isn't a very strong staining there. The strongest staining is on the base of it. So if you didn't have the base, you could make a mistake there. And some people, they don't pull out the mushroom by the base. They won't pull out the base of the mushroom as well. I mean, you can see there at the base, there is the yellow staining. But if you just say you'd chop this off here, you could make that mistake. And lots of people do that. They'll carry the knife around. There's even some books which recommend that you chop the mushroom off because they're kind of concerned about damaging the mycelium. I don't think it will damage the mycelium. I've grown mushrooms and you can pull them out. It doesn't seem to do anything to the mycelium. So I always pull them out personally. And there's a very good reason to in this case because you need the base for identification purposes. So this is the next day and 
you can see that the gills of they're no longer pinkish, fresh and pinkish. They you could probably mistake that for grey, I guess. So you if you were picking them at this stage, there's probably a greater chance of making some kind of mistaken identity. Let's have a look if we've got um, yellowing still. Uh, yeah, there's still quite a bit of yellowing there. So that's quite reassuring, I guess, to see that even if you pick them at that stage, you'd see the yellowing. And this isn't right at the base. Usually at the completely at the base is where the strongest yellowing reaction is. And you can see there that there's still a strong yellowing reaction at the base. There's also a very strong uh, carbolic um, elastoplast smell uh, coming off these things again. I can smell it even from here behind the camera. Uh, I just wanted to point out actually that supposedly some people can eat yellow stainer without it causing them problems. But I believe for the majority of people it causes problems or, you know, how are you going to find out anyway? <laughs> You're going to have to eat it and then just see if you puke your guts up. So it doesn't sound like a fun experiment to me. All right, well that's it, that's the yellow stainer. Don't get it confused. Don't be projectile vomiting across your kitchen table. Thanks for listening. See you next time for more Mushroom Adventures.